So in this section, I did want to show you guys um, a more traditional kind of method of, you know, doing the high res to low res stuff. Um, just do some straight, good old fashioned poly modeling. Um, now I know this thing would actually be really, really easy to do inside a ZBrush. <laughs> um, well, most of it would be, um, but I still rely really heavily on poly modeling, actually more so than um, not. And the reason why is, you know, Z Modeler is super powerful, Moto is super great, Fusion is super awesome, um, but you know, well, Moto is a traditional modeler, but you know, not relying so much on the Boolean stuff. But the traditional kind of poly workflow is a very kind of, it's not mechanical like in terms of the CAD workflows or anything like that, but it's its a decent, decently exact workflow. Like when I know when I put an edge where that edge is going, I'm not worried about it slicing, sliding around or doing anything weird. Um, I know with this way I can get clean geometry out of it. Um, not that that really matters, like the clean geometry thing. If you can rip a normal map off of it, you can rip a normal map off of it. I, I am not one of those guys who's going to tell you, oh, it needs to be quads or you can't use a Boolean thing. I'm telling you guys to use that stuff if it helps you. But for me, especially on these ornate things, um, it's a combination of things. Like it's probably a lot of me just really, A, enjoying the manual workflow of this. I know it sounds very strange that I'm like, oh, yeah, this is fun. Um, but for me, I really do enjoy it. Like, I mean, I've always enjoyed the ornate kind of modeling all the way back to Blizzard. I remember uh, one of the uh, artists that I worked with, uh, Sophia, uh, Sophia, uh, I think her last name's Cruz, I think. She got married, so I don't know if she switched her last name or not. If she did, I apologize. But anyway, she was really, really talented uh, environment artist and uh, environment modeler, and uh, she had a really good way of doing or doing ornate modeling. Same with uh, uh, Tyler. Uh, God, what was Tyler's last name? I think it was Hunter. Um, and uh, yeah, they both had really good ways of doing ornate modeling, and it was super inspiring. So you know, I really picked it up and I really enjoyed it. And it, the ways that you know it kind of comes down to is it's this basic kind of clean traditional, you know, modeling like you know polys, edges, quads, keeping things somewhat clean, relying on subdivisional surfaces to do things, pushing the polys around a little bit, and it really allows you to get pretty pretty far with things. Now, the other thing too to note is also kind of just understanding of when to break the rules and when to not follow your reference one for one. And you, you definitely heard me right. I said when not to follow your reference one to one. There are times when you get stuff from concept artists or you're looking at a photo, you're doing stuff, and you know proportions might be wrong. Some things are more practical in like a CAD software than they are in a poly, you know, based program. Uh, you know, it just depends on your pipeline, depends on your time. So, you know, just keep that in mind. And also, like, you know, I think for me at least, it's more about the spirit of said concept or said, you know, photo or whatever. Because once you get into your game environment or once you start playing with it in 3D, there's a bunch of constraints and stuff and just a bunch of things that you're going to have to react to that the concept artist or the guy who gave you the reference photo didn't realize. I'm infamous for getting photos and modifying the hell out of them as I'm going. Like, I... I am a very anti-believer in the fact that some studios have artists that just trace concept art. I do not think that that is remotely useful. I, I think it's it's a waste of time. I think that you can have really talented artists that are really, really good, that if you spend a little bit of upfront time letting them kind of understand the visual language and up understanding the process, that they can go really, really far um, and really kick a lot of ass towards the end of it. Like they can really start to understand the language and really bust things out. And then that initial cost of making sure that they're just tracing the lines and stuff kind of goes away after the second or third asset. So it's an investment really in your kind of, in your people basically. And everything you're seeing here is super basic poly modeling, you know, traditional sub, sub D workflow. Um, for this guy, it looks more complicated than it is. It's really like five or six pieces, right? So when you look at a photo or you look at a concept art, that's the first thing you do. You start splitting it down into pieces and the individual elements. You're not really, you know, don't get overwhelmed by the actual object because 
I mean, something like this is it's just a wall piece, you know, it's just an ornamental thing, so it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy to do. I'm not going to narrate too much through this because it's it's pretty self-explanatory as you guys are watching it. Um, but I just, you know, I want to let you guys know that, like, you know, feel free to experiment with this. And the nice thing about, you know, dealing with the normal mapping and stuff is that as long as you're kind of encompassing the silhouette detail, as long as you're kind of encompassing the asset, I, I always try to explain to people, it's like you're basically encompassing the spirit of the asset, basically the broad silhouette forms. Um, everything else will just rip, right? You don't need to stitch everything in and do all that kind of crap. You don't need to do that. It's not a film asset. You can definitely get away with not doing that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, you'll see in some areas like here, I'm just going to jam something to the surface and rotate it around. Now, if you want to, you can go in and dynamesh it, and there's a bunch of things that you could do after this if you wanted to take it even further. Um, but again, it's a point of kind of diminishing returns. And I think you'll see once this asset kind of gets injected into the uh, into our pipeline here, it just tends to work out pretty well and pretty straightforward. And again, you know, we'll try things, and some things will work, and some things won't. But, uh, you know, it's kind of all about having fun with it, and kind of playing around with stuff. All right, guys, hope you're enjoying this, and we'll just keep on going.
The gods that men do is oft interred with their bones. But the evil 